Hello, Cancer viewers. I am going to look into the energy. Um, this could be could be about finances, could be about love, could be an old person, could be a new person coming in. It's just whatever the cards want to say, whatever the story is. You know, it always kind of varies. But, um, you know, we'll get into it. We'll see what's going on. I am kind of switching things up on this channel a little bit. So I have started doing third party readings recently. I'll, I will be continuing to do the mid month and beginning of the month Zodiac readings, but you're also going to see more and more uh, third party and twin flame and soulmate readings on this channel as well. And maybe some financial readings here and there. Okay. I've got cold guarded, distrusting, trapped, blocked, tied up. Cancer viewers, what is going on? Ooh, there's some, there's something going on here. Sadness, codependency, addiction. Willpower, strength, confidence. Betrayal, jealousy, conflict. You, some of you are going through a dark night of the soul or your person's going through a dark night of the soul right now. These are some heavy energies we got going on here. Overthinking, overanalyzing, self-sabotage. Manifestation, power, intention. Soul contract. Okay, someone here has a soul contract that they keep repeating that they need to end if they're going to be able to live their best life. That's what's coming through here. I feel like, and this could be your person, your person might be struggling with these issues and, um, you know, that could be it for a lot of you. I feel like this is you. And I feel like some of you have this pattern of, um, you know, going for people that are cold and guarded and distrusting. It's like you have this like a, like a subconscious pattern or possibly a soul contract. Like you keep going for these same situations, these emotionally unavailable connections and almost trapping yourself, blindfolding yourself. You know, you see this thread is connecting, it's connecting this energy to this cold guarded, these, you know, cold guarded, distrusting, uh, emotionally unavailable people and trapping you a little bit here and blo and blocking someone and tying them up and keeping them sad, keeping them codependent and addicted to these karmic cycles. The energy I get here is someone stuck in a karmic cycle. Now this could be you. This could also be your person though. I might be letting you know what your person's going through possibly. But someone needs to have the willpower and strength and confidence to break, to take the blindfold off and, and break these patterns. This could be your person too. You might have also, you know, I've been, might have been dealing, maybe you've broken the patterns already, but you're talking to someone that like everything was perfect and they ghosted you because they got in this mindset of thinking it's too good to be true, of thinking that they don't deserve it. And they were not used to a healthy, stable relationship. So they sabotaged it and ran. But for others, so there's two stories here. So it could be your person that's going through this and it's kind of explaining why they did what they did, why they ghosted you. For others, this is you. This, these are your own patterns that you need to break. You know, someone here needs to be, you know, have strength and confidence and willpower to get past this. I feel like someone's been hurt a lot. Someone's been like betrayed by friends, close friends, maybe a best friend. There's been jealousy, conflict, darkness, dark night of the soul kind of energy. And someone has gotten into this, um, into this pattern, into this way of thinking that they deserve this. Someone has gotten, you know, it's, it's an illusion, but someone has gotten stuck in this illusion that they deserve to be betrayed. They deserve to be hurt. They deserve bad things in life. Someone has a very um, pessimistic way of thinking. So this is either you or this is your person, someone you're close to. But someone is, is in like an eight of swords energy, keeping themselves trapped and blocked and tied up with these karmic cycles. And these karmic cycles are meant to end. They're meant to be wrapped up now is what I'm feeling. Because um, I'm feeling like someone has a history, whether it's you or your person, someone has a history here of, you know, being betrayed, being cheated on, being stabbed in the back, being, you know, just this person's been through the ringer. They've been through it all. They've possibly been homeless, um, in poverty, um, you know, cheated on, betrayed, heartbroken, left by most of the people they've loved, just through a lot. 
And of course, no one would probably consciously think that they deserve that. But someone here does have like childhood wounds or they have guilt for things that they've done in the past maybe they had like a period where they had to go through a lot to survive maybe someone here was homeless and they went through a lot to survive and they have um guilt from what they had to do to survive like maybe someone got involved in um could be prostitution this is for one specific person but someone might have had to do some things that they did not want to do to survive and to get by financially and they have guilt and it's keeping them trapped in the Eight of Swords energy and keeping them trapped in this karmic cycle. And this needs to be cleared up. Um, like I said, take it as it resonates because you know what your personal story is. But this is just the, the energy. This is the energy group right here. This is either you or your person. But it's like someone on some subconscious level, either they had a bad childhood or, or like they went through some kind of trauma or maybe just like they feel guilt for things that they've done. But for some reason on like a subconscious level, they feel like they don't deserve good things. They feel like anything that's good in their life is just too good to be true. So this person's very pessimistic when something good comes along and it's like they're keeping themselves, themselves stuck. They're keeping themselves blocked from their own destiny and their own happiness. So this message is basically saying it's time to forgive yourself. It is time to forgive yourself for what you did to survive. Or it is time to, to heal from what you went through in childhood as hard as it may be. And this could also be, um, I mean, for a lot of people, I feel like this is subconscious. This is like, you know, like obviously you probably don't consciously think that you deserve bad things. But it's almost like someone's repeating this pattern where they're subconsciously punishing themselves for something or they're it, it's almost like like if someone's had like an abusive childhood, then they kind of get in this pattern where they feel like like toxic environments feel like home to them because it's what they're familiar with. It's what they grew up with. They're used to it. So it feels right to them and healthy, stable environments feel boring or shallow or they just they don't resonate with them because they're not used to them. So someone here really needs to change their patterns. And it's not just about removing the old stagnant energies. It's also about replacing those old habits and patterns and ways of thinking with new habits, new patterns, new ways of thinking. Because, you know, change comes, what is that quote? Change comes not just with by removing the old, but also by, you know, replacing it, by building the new is, is the important thing, the, the key focus, building the new. Because let's say that you have an addiction to smoking. If you quit smoking and you don't have like chewing gum or any outlets, you're just sitting there by yourself all day in bed, you're going to go back to smoking because you have nothing. You have no outlet. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, you have to quit smoking, but you have to replace it. You have to have something to place, replace it, whether it's um, chewing gum as you slowly get off smoking or it's, um, you know, art, music, things that you love, things to keep yourself occupied that make you happy. You know what I mean? Like you can't just remove the old energies and just have this like empty, empty void, you know, because then the old energies are going to sneak back in sooner or later. So you have to bring in the new energies as well, the new hobbies, the new ways of thinking, the new people, new patterns, new, you know what I mean? Like these new energies to replace the old patterns and, and people and ways of thinking. You know, you have to invite the new into your life and have outlets, creative outlets, fun outlets, hobbies, you know, hobbies are really important. Art, music, some of you need to get back into art and music. There are some musicians and artists here. You used to paint or you used to sing. Or you used to write, like you used to write poems or song lyrics or something and you got depressed and you got, you you know, you you lost yourself. Maybe you got tied up with finances, like your your finances, you know, went to crap and you, you, you know, had to survive and everything, you kind of lost everything. Maybe some of you lost something in like a fire or something too, I'm getting for a couple of you. There was like a house fire and you lost a lot or like you had a crazy ex steal some stuff from you or steal your old notebooks or something like that. But, but in it, the, the general energy I get here is um, it's time to write again. It's time to sing again. It's time to dance again. It's time to pursue hobbies again. It's time to reclaim your passion, reclaim your life, reclaim your destiny again. Take your power back again. Because some of you are holding on to toxic people that it's, it's 
they're not even good for you and you know it intuitively. You know it you know it intuitively, honestly. It's time to take your power back. It's time to make your life what you want it to be. And it might not be easy. It might be hard, but it, it's it's time. It's 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 time. It's it's past time. You know what I mean? It's it's time. The time is now. Um but yeah, some of you have these patterns or your person has these patterns. This could be a look into, like I said, for some of you, this is a look into your person, why they are the way they are, why they do the things that they do, um, why they, you know, why they did this or that. But for others, it's for a lot of you, I feel like this is you. But some of you have this pattern of like going for people that are emotionally unavailable. It feels familiar. It feels, it feels normal. It feels right for you. And it takes a lot sometimes to change those patterns. It really does. But sometimes you can't go for people that you're attracted to right away. You have to be honest about the red flags. You have to develop confidence, willpower, strength. You have to be willing to let someone go when they show you that, you know, that they don't have your best interest at heart. You have to be honest with yourself about the red flags. Because the thing is, a narcissist will try to gaslight you into not believing the red flags. Narcissist... What is that quote that I saw? I saw this quote where it was like, um, someone was like, why do I always attract narcissists? And, and the other person was like, you don't attract narcissists. Narcissists are not picky. They go to everyone. The problem you need to address is why do you let them stay in your life? You know, that's, that's the thing. They go, narcissists will try everybody. The, what what you need to ask, it's not about them, it's about you. Why do you let them stay in your life? And you have to take your power back there. And I know it's hard. I get that it's hard. I've been through this energy before. You know what I mean? Like I get it. It's it's difficult. I've been through similar energies, I should say at least. I've been I've been in those abusive relationships. I understand that. Even though it's been a while for me since I've been in that, I've changed those patterns, but I still understand these energies. Um but it's like some of you just have this, this, it's like this, this, um, this cycle of, of, yeah, of going for emotionally unavailable people because some subconscious part of you feels like that's what you deserve. It's what you're used to. It's familiar. It's predictable. And you need to take this blindfold off and notice these red cords. It's almost like you've got these like, de like demonic attachments or, or toxic people that are connected to these cords connected to you. And you don't even realize these psychic vampires around you are draining your, your life force out of you. They're draining you. They're hurting you. You need to take the blindfold off and look at this cord. Look how dark it is and cut it. Look around you. Get out of the Eight of Swords and look around you and see what's going on here. Be honest with yourself. Um, because like I said, some of you are just repeating these patterns because it's like what you're familiar with. It's what you're used to. And it's like you're punishing yourself. You're, you know what I mean? It's like this, this karmic cycle that keeps repeating it's this codependent cycle and you have to be willing to let people go when they're when they show you the red flags and it's hard if you're alone it's hard to let those people go and if you don't have hobbies if you're not pursuing your hobbies anymore it makes it even harder because you have nothing to fall back on so this person becomes your everything and this is pattern and then they when they hurt you you're not willing to listen to the red flags because you have nothing else aside from this person so you got to have other things going on in your life too um, to help you get out of this, in these energies. But someone here, it's like, you got to develop this genuine strength and confidence. I know it's easier said than done. I know, I know it takes time sometimes, but, um, it's like someone's just been through a lot and because of guilt or because of childhood, they feel like it's normal or they feel like it's what they're used to. And narcissists will gaslight you. That's the thing. Narcissists will prey on you and gaslight you. So it's like, Something might feel off, like maybe you have these, like, these relationships where something feels off, like you notice the red flags and you address it and this person tells you, you're they gaslight you, they gaslight you, they tell you you're crazy, they tell you you're making it up, they tell you you're being dramatic and so they silence you, they block your throat chakra and you know, you need, if it hurts you, it doesn't matter if it's a big deal to most people or not, it's, it's hurting you, that's the point, it's your life. If it's a, if it, if it upsets you, it's a big deal. Whether they think it is or not, it doesn't matter. The point is that it upsets you. So you got to free yourself from that. You got to put yourself first here and put your intuition first here and put your spirit guides first in this situation. It doesn't matter if they think you're crazy or dramatic or whatever. 
What matters is it hurt you. It upset you. It crossed a line. Narcissists will do anything to try to get you to ignore red flags when they come up. When, when you see a red flag in a narcissist, they will gaslight you into trying to make you think that the red flag is, isn't there, that it's an illusion. You're seeing things, you're being dramatic, you're making things up, yada, yada. No, you need to trust your intuition. Trust your intuition and stand by that and be safe and get out of these connections. Because some of you keep going for emotionally unavailable people. It's the same old cycle, same predictable cycle, same codependent cycle. And some of you are punishing yourself. And so you need to kind of address this. This is basically someone that needs to do a lot of shadow work is basically what I feel here. Another energy I'm getting here for someone is that this could also be past life. Someone could be re uh, repeating soul contracts from a past life. Maybe you did some stuff in a past life that was pretty bad. And so you're still punishing yourself. Someone's punishing themselves and it could be connected to a past life. Maybe you did a lot of bad things, shady things in a past life. And your karmic debt has actually been paid this lifetime. Like you're good. You've paid that debt, but you're still punishing yourself just because you're used to that karmic cycle. So it's like, let's say that, um, God, what would this situation be? Like you stole a lot of money. So you ended up being homeless this life, but you paid the karmic debt. You're free of it now. So you can move on from that. Or, um, let's say that you, um, like these emotionally unavailable relationships, like you, uh, and I'm not saying that you can just move on from homeless relationships just like that. I'm not saying it's that easy. I'm just saying that some of you are like punishing. It's like you're self-sabotaging. Like you're punishing yourself. And these karmic cycles are taking longer than they need to take. It's like the karmic cycle has ended, but someone's holding on to the karmic cycle because it's familiar and they're used to it. And they and it's it's what they know. It feels comfortable to them. And this could be with living situations, with jobs. This could also be with love. Like you keep, you keep going for emotionally unavailable people. And it's like maybe you're punishing yourself. Maybe you hurt someone really bad in a past life. And now it's like you're, you're still punishing yourself for that. And these cycles need to be wrapped up because like you paid the karmic debt. But some of you get stuck in your head and overthink things and sabotage yourself. It's like you, it's like you trust devils and you distrust angels kind of energy is what I get. It's, um, it's like someone's like sabotaging. They're overthinking. They're overanalyzing. They're sabotaging because they're not used to good things. They're not used to good people in their life. So when someone good comes along, they either... It's too boring, it's too it's too unfamiliar, it's too scary, it's probably too good to be true. It's um, not what they're used to, so they sabotage it. And it's like someone needs to kind of take their power back. Maybe um, manifest, maybe, maybe witchcraft is also possible. Some of you are starting to dabble in witchcraft and you do have to be careful, but some of you, you're gonna find your power in witchcraft because some of you were witches in past lives and you're gonna really tap into your magic and realize that the world can be your oyster. And that you really can have good things. This is someone who does not believe that good things can last. This is someone that does not believe that good things are possible for them. And this reading is telling you it is. It is possible. But you have to break these. You have to take the blindfold off. Acknowledge the red flags. And and end these patterns. And pursue your hobbies and passions again. And, and recreate your life basically. There's a lot of major heavy shadow work that has to be done here. A lot of honesty and vulnerability that you need to have with yourself. There's past life, um, possible soul contracts that need to be acknowledged and healed and, and cut as well so that you can have the life that you want. Adventure, honeymoon, vacation, you know, destiny, true love, whatever you want. You know what I mean? Because some of you are asking for like, you're asking for like a stable loving partner because on a conscious level, you want that. You're like, I want my true love. But then these people come in and, and it's like the same emotionally unavailable thing, unavailable patterns and it's like, it's not like the universe punishing you. It's not like your guides want you to, to be with these toxic people, but it's like, this is what you're attracted to. It's body language. You're subconsciously attracted to those types of people. You're punishing yourself on some level, it feels like. You know, so it's like these patterns are kind of repeating here. Does that make sense? So it's like, you know, the universe wants you to have good things. They want you to have true love, but... It's almost like self-sabotage where it's kind of like you don't believe that you can have good things or you don't believe that you can have true love or have anything good last for you. 
And so it's like you manifest that unintentionally because you, you go for people that are like that. You go for emotionally unavailable people and you give it your all and you completely let them in. You're completely vulnerable with people, but some part of you knows they're going to break your heart. Some part of you knows that these people are not right for you. Some part of you knows that these people are toxic. Even just a small part of you knows that there's red flags here. But in the past, you've ignored those red flags. And then everything blows up and it's it's like self-sabotage. It's like subconscious self-sabotage where, you know, everything blows up and then you're like, see, good things can't last. It's like, it's like a confirmation. It's almost like some part of you looks for a confirmation of, you know, that, that pain and heartbreak is all you're going to have. You know what I mean? It's like, because then it's like you get yourself in these situations and then you're like, see, you know, I knew, I knew he or she was going to break my heart. I knew good things couldn't last for me. Well, it's like, no, it's not that good things can't last for you. It's that you're going for a certain type of person. You're going for certain types of people, friends, lovers, you're going, you're, you're stick, you're in these certain patterns. So if you keep doing it, it's going to be an endless merry-go-round where you're going to meet the same person again and again and again in different bodies. It's going to be the same old story again and again and again, where everything's perfect and you get your heart broken. You got to get out of these energies. You got to end these karmic cycles so that you can step into your power. You can do the shadow work and have the life that you're meant to have. You can have good things. You can have true love. You can, some of you are meant to be singers or, or you know, artists or whatever. It's like, you, you know, you have a good destiny, but you have to align with that destiny now. You have to believe in that. You have to believe that you can have good things. And you got to stop trusting and giving your all to the wrong situations and the wrong people. Give all that energy you're giving to these toxic people. Give that energy to yourself and you will see miracles happen. So anyway, if you want a private reading, my email is below. Please subscribe if this resonates and please share this message too. I think this is a really important message, not just for cancers, but for everybody. So I, I hope that you guys share this message on social media. Um, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you. And any donations are appreciated too. Even just a dollar, it adds up quickly. My donation links are right below in the description box. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for watching.